so you want to be a sniper. Got the fan, so you're going to be staring down this crosshairs of a scope aimed at somebody, point it right dead between their eyes. You're just going to pull the trigger and take them out. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the uh, shit hits the fan without rule of law sniper. Now, I'm somewhat supportive of the idea, but I'm also somewhat not supportive of the idea. Allow me to explain. There are two definitions of a sniper. One is a profession. A sniper as a professional whose job is to fire a gun at long distance. Now, depending on the type of sniper you're talking about, a military sniper or a police sniper. Uh, and the police sniper basically matches the, uh, the, the second definition. Uh, the military sniper has a lot of training that the police sniper doesn't. Uh, field craft, um, there's uh, a lot of stuff. Trail mapping, trail signs, I mean, signaling, uh, a lot of it. When I was uh, HAC scouts in the Army, we, uh, we had an FTX, and I was spotter for a sniper. And, uh, and bear in mind, I haven't been to sniper school, I was... In scouts, it was, hey, you're going to go up and spot for this guy. I was like, all right, cool. Um, and, uh, you know, we got a, uh, <clears throat> we we found the uh, Op Force uh, Talk Temporary Operations Command. We uh, had their commander right in the crosshairs of a rifle. Uh, we are going to make the shot. Caught in the enemy location. Uh, gave our uh, sit rep. And then we were told, no, if you make the shot, they'll know you were there, and it's better to just call in mortars. Next position, hey, here's the enemy. Yep, don't fire. Call in mortars. Hey, hey, look, it's the enemy. Nope, can't give away our position by firing. Call in mortars. You're talking about someone who was HAC scouts, who's, uh, like, we're the guys who are first up for sniper school. Uh, I actually flunked out twice. And uh, these guys are, are telling us not to make a shot because they don't want to give away our position. Uh, call in mortars. Well, they know that we're going to have our position going to be there when mortars come pouring in. The difference is mortars will do more damage than the sniper rifle. So the fact is, there's two types of people who want to be snipers. Uh, the first person is these people who just don't get along with other people. They'd rather do it themselves. Uh, one of the the uh, <laughs> one of the many things that uh, I was told about my personality that had to change when I was in the army was that. Uh, I had to be more of a uh, team player and delegate responsibility. Uh, the way I looked at it, if it can be done, it needs to be done, I'm just going to go do it. I'm not going to ask permission to go do it, I'm just going to do it. If it has to be done, uh, what's the point of going up and saying, hey, can I have permission to go do something that has to be done when I just can go do it anyway? Yep, okay. So... Here's the uh, not long and short of it. The other people are cowards. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They uh, they would much rather um, make this long range shot, kill someone at a distance, so that way they can't be connected to it immediately. You got to decide exactly where you fit in on that fantasy and why. Um. Now, that being said, you get to your second definition of a uh, sniper, which is concealed marksman. This is more on where the police fit in. Uh, a concealed marksman can be anyone. Technically, uh, a concealed marksman who typically engages a target at long range. Now, how you want to determine long range is based on one of two things. Um, your ability to shoot, your weapon system, and the enemy's weapon system. So you don't want to get into one of these little situations to where they can shoot you. Then that's not a, a, a sniper 
mission or sniper attack or whatever you want to call it. Uh, to be honest, most sniper attacks are simply uh, far ambushes. Um, you don't want to be caught in a situation where the enemy can shoot you just as easily as you can shoot them. That's not a sniper attack. That's not a far ambush. That's called combat. That's reality. That's a bitch. Alright. <laughs> um... What you want to do is to be able to engage your enemy either outside of their ability to shoot back at you or to fire from a position of concealment and then disappear. When you make that shot, one of two things happen. Hell, even if you don't make that shot, one of two things happen. All right, one is you give away your position. Right? That's going to happen no matter what. So that's not even one, that's point zero. You give away your position. Following giving away your position, two things occur. Number one, they return fire. Uh, they go for suppressive fire. For most of it, it's going to be spray and pray. Two, they're going to run for cover. Now here's the thing about it. If you're in a concealed position and there's ten guys, you shoot one of them. And they all run for cover. You got a chance to scoop. It's far ambush. Shoot and scoop. Now, that being said, a sniper, concealed marksman, hell, a fucking dumb grunt, has to know their three C's. Cover, concealment, and camouflage. Okay, um, cover is anything which can prevent contact between you and the enemy and that hides your, pres that hides your presence. If... Your enemy, your op four, your opposing force, uh, is armed with handguns. They're not going to be very effective outside of a range of, oh, let's say 30 feet. Hell, 90 feet. 30 yards. And they're not going to uh, uh, be able to shoot through brick walls and shit. However, if you're dealing with someone armed with an AK-47, they can potentially reach you out to 200 meters, 200 yards, and an AK will go through a brick wall. So that brick wall you're hiding behind, to the guy with the AK, it's not cover, it's concealment. It's as effective at stopping bullets as smoke, which is also concealment. The beauty of concealment is it hides you. The enemy cannot shoot what it cannot see. The bad part is there's a good chance they can always get lucky and just spray and hit something. Potentially you. Then uh, you get into camouflage. Camouflage means they can see you, they just don't notice you. It's not a color of your clothing. It is how you act, how you move, and how well you blend into your environment. Okay? Slow movements aren't noticed. Uh, there's a, a simple rule in the military. When in doubt, go prone. When, they also teach us ninjutsu too, by the way, that even in an open field, you drop to your belly. And just wait. Listen. If it seems clear, crawl. If it comes to it, you can, you know, run for something that's cover or concealment. But, your best bet is to drop flat and crawl towards it. That way there's less of a target for them to aim at. Uh, if you're in an environment where people are running around in tactical gear and free to use, okay, blend in. Um, since most people won't be living on a, a, a military post, um, yeah, you, you're just blending in to look like the local population. That's the whole reason I have my beard. Uh, it, it just blends in with everyone else around me. I, I look like 30 other guys out on the street. Um, then it gets, uh, uh, as we're discussing this, uh, you know, that's camouflage. I look like other people who are out there on the street. I throw on a denim jacket and some jeans and a baseball hat. You can't tell the difference between me and, and you know, a whole bunch of other people that look the exact same way running around backlit. 
that's where I live at. That's the way things are. This shirt uh, that says, when I can't sleep, I count the uh, buckles on my straitjacket. Uh, this is something that I would wear to, like, say, going to a rock concert to blend in with them. I'd probably uh, change the way my hair is cut and, uh, oh, shave the beard. <laughs> I mean, just to blend into my immediate environment. Uh, if, if I'm going to be uptown in the city, deal, you know, around professional people, I want to look somewhat professional. If uh, I'm standing around Bible salesmen, I want to have a polo shirt and some khakis, and I want to look like a Bible salesman. Uh, if I'm around a bunch of rednecks, I want to look like a redneck. Uh, I don't want to be noticed. I'm just another face in the crowd. Now, uh, we also get into this. Um... There's certain things that you need to understand. I'm going to lay out six real quick little pointers here. Uh, for one, you need to engage a threat on your terms. Preferably become a, before it becomes a danger to you and your family. Uh, I, I've made like four videos trying to retape this so far. Uh, I'm going to avoid the straw man arguments. If here's a scenario, da da da, I'm just going to no, screw that. Um, here's the thing about it. You need, if you feel that your life is in danger, there's an immediate threat coming towards you. They are armed and deadly, and you have people to defend, to protect wife, children, whatever. Um, you need to engage that threat on your terms. Uh, that means you need to uh, have a plan of action. You need to understand how to do so. This is where I think the uh, shit hits the fan, the without rule of law, the, the guerrilla sniper, if, if you want to break it down like that, uh, the, the, the civilian sniper, the, the uh, guerrilla sniper in a combat zone, um, this is where certain tactics that they employ uh, will benefit someone in a survival situation, especially self-defense. Now, you have to realize something. If you're going to do this, you're going to have to, A, be proactive, be able to think for yourself, there are two different things, and C, you know, be willing to take a severe risk. You are essentially putting your life, you know, uh, putting your life in your own hands. And, and there's a possibility a situation can escalate, and it can get worse, and it can be worse for you. <laughs> Um, the basic plan I would suggest would be far ambush, shoot, and scoot. You know, uh, if you're going to engage a, a threat, a, a, a known threat, do so at uh, 100 yards or more, 200 yards. Uh, do so so that when you fire that first shot, you're calm, you're relaxed, you don't have to worry about the stress shooting or none of that. It's just like bench rest shooting. You're laying on your stomach, you're in a nice comfortable position, you know, you might be hot or whatever, but it's okay. Nice, slow, steady, trigger squeeze, basic fundamentals of marksmanship, stable position, controlled breathing, whatever. And you put around center mass of that one guy. Because when everyone else takes a run for cover, you're running. And you're going to follow your three C's. Cover, concealment, and camouflage. You're going to use cover and concealment as best you can so they can't see you while you're moving away. Because when you fire that shot, you have two responses. Two things will happen. Number one, they're going to return fire. Number two, they're going to run for cover. If they return fire and you've only fired one shot, there's a good chance they might not know your exact position. So they're firing and expending ammo. And you can tell whereabouts they think you're at by where those rounds are hitting. If they're not hitting anywhere close to you, slowly move out the way. If they're coming towards you, get the fuck out as quick as possible. Um, the, <laughs> like I said, you want to shoot and scoot. If, if, if they run for cover, you want to run for cover. And you don't want to do this around your house. There's an old saying, don't shit where you eat. You want to be engaging in these type of tactics, moving them away from your home. Uh, yes, you'll probably be starting from your home, which means you'll have to evac your house, use cover and concealment to go to a point where you can make the shot, and then lead them away following that shot. Sometimes you might actually have to bait them 
by making the shot, moving laterally, and then when they move to the position they think you fired from, fire on them again. So that now what came as a shot from the north is now being shot at from the east. And at best you want to just run in circles. Uh, keep them chasing their own tails because at some point you can just hide in the woods and watch them run around in circles looking for you. Uh, you know, you, you need to remember the golden rule of combat marksmanship. Uh, <laughs> distance favors the superior marksman. All right. Aggression wins close range battles. Keep that in mind. Because if you're involved in a close range gun battle, 75 meters or less, the more bullets you fire into that person, the better. It, don't worry about this crap about two to the chest, one to the head. Just keep shooting. I don't care if you blow off their big toe, you catch them in the kneecap, and you are aiming for the guy's head. Every little bit counts. You know, just, 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 just it's called pain compliance in uh, martial arts. The idea of using pressure points and twisting joints so that it causes a great deal of pain and forces a person to go along with the direction you're, you're, you're leading them. Okay, this is just another version of pain compliance, except you're doing it with a gun. Now, since range benefits the superior marksman, this is where we get to our other little thing you gotta consider. Practice. Practice, 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 practice. This isn't just bench rest shooting. Since you're gonna be shoot you're gonna be employing the shoot and scoot tactic, you need to uh, go to the range. And uh, before you start shooting out in the parking lot, run laps around the parking lot at the range. 10, 15 reps. Start doing wind sprints. Uh, drop and give me 50. Walk in the range, walk down there, and, you know, give me another 25 more. Do about 50 jumping jacks since you got your heart rate and breathing all up and shit. And try making that shot. Try making that shot at 300 yards. You're going to have to calm your breathing. You're going to have to do a whole number of different things to learn to adjust to that scenario to be able to pull that tactic off there, there, there's more to shooting than just aiming down the sights and pulling the trigger all right now the last thing you're going to have to remember is you have to know how to prioritize your targets by prioritize your targets it's simple leaders lead followers follow if you can take out the leader the followers will either squabble amongst themselves about who's going to be the new follower or they're going to turn tail and run Sometimes, shooting people isn't a good idea. Now, I know most people are like, well, shooting people is never a good idea. Not true. If someone's trying to harm me or my family, shooting them is a great idea. So stabbing them, setting them on fire, hanging them, bludgeoning them to death, whatever. If, if, you're, if you intend me harm or... Uh, any harm to me or mine, I'm going to respond in kind. I'm a dick, but I'm a realist. See, you need to prioritize your targets. If you have a neighborhood full of gun bunnies, I do, um, and you have six guys in a SUV driving down the street, shooting out the windows, and Blasting their loud ass music, throwing Motov cocktails, and saying they're gonna come kill you and everything else. Most of those people will have guns and they'll be returning fire. My goal, my priority, isn't to try to take out the driver of the vehicle. Nah, screw that. I ain't even trying to take out the guys that are shooting. If they're 300 yards away from me, I'm putting rounds into the engine block. Oh, wait, I said I wasn't gonna make strong arguments. Now, uh, I'm going to put rounds in that engine block. Why? Because if the vehicle doesn't move, these guys are pinned down. They're stuck. 
They have people around them who hate them and want to kill them because they're a threat to them. If I don't do it, somebody else will take them down. Now, the fun part with all this is that once you disable that vehicle, they got to get out of it. Move to a new position and wait. Somebody pops out, pow, there goes around right through them. How quick do you think someone's going to be willing to, wanting to surrender, hoping they can surrender and, and, and you will just beat their ass or let them go with a warning or, or whatever and not kill them because the vehicle they came in is disabled. They've lost people. There's people around them who want them dead. You think they're not willing to bargain? Sure. This comes down to the idea that you need to understand the situation. Okay? This is... Uh, this is where prioritizing your targets comes into. You need to understand that sometimes uh, the... Shit hits the fan sniper isn't going to be killing people at all. And for those of you who need to, who, who are worried about being the victim of a sniper attack, a far ambush essentially, uh, what it comes down to is this I'm not worried about the guy trying to shoot me. Fuck him. He's a dumbass. I'm worried about the guy smart enough to shoot my solar panels, shoot my generator. Because you do that, you take out some of my force multipliers, my electric defense, my uh, uh, closed circuit TV cameras, my floodlights, all the things that I have set up so that I know, so that I know you're there. A lot of that will be taken out that easy, that quickly, which is why... I have uh, alternatives to those things, which is why I put that information out. I have alternatives that I can apply, but the fact is there's a lot of other people out there who have the same things that I have, you know, solar panels and wind generators and, and uh, uh, diesel generators that they have in their preps that they're going to use for their preps, that they haven't considered, you know, hey, Somebody might shoot me because of sniper, but they haven't considered this guy might actually put a bullet in your vehicle, disable your vehicle. They might um, put a bullet into uh, your generator to kill your power because if you don't have any lights, hey, you can't see them. You know, I have uh, I spent fifty dollars and bought a uh, kids' toy. Um, they're uh, spy net night vision goggles. I think it's spy net. No, it's spy gear. Uh, it's some kid's toy night vision goggles. Now, the cool things about these goggles is they work like every other typical kid's night vision goggles. They have the little red LED lights and that up to 50 foot range that you can see things. But they also have a close mode, uh, a close range mode that uh, has uh, little LEDs that don't uh, give off visible light. And you can see up to 10 feet. The funny thing about these goggles is uh, I was playing with them on the close mode uh, the other night. Just uh, out in my buddy's backyard with no other lights around me, just going off starlight in the moon, I had decent ass uh, range out to uh, hell, um, about 50, 60 feet on them. Uh, some of the more open areas uh, out to 100 feet. Uh, just uh, with a kid's toy. This was set on the close range. It was only supposed to go out to 10 feet. But in a closed room with no other ambient light, it's about 10 feet. Uh, just depending on the LEDs themselves, uh, it's 10 feet. If I have ambient light around me from star starlight and moonlight, it expands. But here's the idea. I mean, think about it. How would you deal with someone who used a... Uh, long-range shot to disable your uh, generator, which disables your electricity. And at the same time, it comes creeping through your house with uh, night vision goggles that you can't see 10 feet in front of you, but they can. 
uh, it's a scary thought. This is where the idea that if you can identify a threat far off and engage it far off, it's one thing, right? Um, but, uh, you know, the, the most intelligent thing that a person can do as far as being the uh, 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 shit hits the fan sniper, and I'm perfectly fine with the idea of engaging targets at a distance on your terms for your safety. For your family's safety, I, I don't have uh, much uh, uh, difficulty with the person doing that, um, especially if they're a uh, openly visible threat. Openly visible threat isn't it's without rule of law and somebody's carrying a gun. An openly visible threat is it's without rule of law and somebody's carrying a gun, shooting at people, or kicking in doors and and, and, and robbing people. Uh, if they'll do it to somebody else, they'll do it to you. If they'll do it to somebody else, and there's a chance you can drop this guy from uh, 100 yards away, and he won't even see you uh, where you're at when you make the shot, cool. Uh, but, you know, you need to realize that gunshot's going to cause attention. It's going to attract people's attention. Um, and you're going to have some people who are going to take you out because you can make that shot, and you're a threat to them. Uh, I mean, here's the thing about it. Uh, I'm going to talk about something I really don't talk about a whole lot. Uh, quite a few people are aware that uh, I had an incident in my life where um, a friend of mine, a, a guy that I love like a brother, got out of hand. Uh, one night because he was drunk and stoned and uh, he took two different types of pills was smoking weed on top of vodka and everything else came to my house uh, and uh, he uh, uh, I, I told him to stay there and sleep it off and, and shit just got out of hand and uh, he actually crossed it on me I was about to whoop his ass so I told him to leave and he broke back into my house, uh, reached for a knife, and hit him with a hammer. Um, in fact, if two people wouldn't have stopped me, I probably would have killed him with that hammer. Uh, I had to hit him twice to bring him down. The first time, he actually blocked it a little bit and ripped his uh, scalp right here. The second time, I hit him right above the temple here, and he went down. I was going to hit him a third time, but uh, I got stopped, and I'm, I'm thankful for the people who stopped me. Uh... At the time, I really wasn't, but it was just that I clicked in the soldier mode. And it was threat, engage, close with, and kill. And I wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't trying to say, you know, I've known this kid since Paper Ninjas. Um, that, you know, I, I, I've, <laughs> he was like my little brother. Uh, yeah, I used to... Everybody used to refer to him as my sidekick, and I used to make a joke that he was my bad luck charm, because every time me and him was around each other, it was some kind of adventure or something going wrong. And uh, I, I would have taken a bullet for him. Hell, I would still take a bullet for him now. But um, I essentially killed my best friend. I had every intention of doing it when uh, I went into soldier mode. And uh, even though I was stopping doing it, I'm no longer a part of his life. He's no longer a part of mine. Uh, he, he's just terrified. <laughs> of me, um, because he's actually seen that I can reach that level of violence. Everyone talks about being able to, but not very many people can. And there's a certain stigma that comes along with it. And uh, if you have to reach that level of violence, you have to. There's no, uh, there's no excuses, no anything. You just have to go there, you go there, and... That's it. It took me six months. Uh, I mean, it, for six months, this shit just tore me apart uh, to actually rationalize it away. And then when I did, I basically uh, became this real bad asshole um, to a lot of people uh, just because everything was cold and logical. And I, I was the only thing I could do, like, kill my, the emotions of the whole situation. And uh, I did a lot of stuff and... It was just, it wasn't, it wasn't a good experience, all right? 
there's a completely different feeling than realizing that you were just on autopilot and that you were going to kill somebody that, you, that, that who was a close friend of yours that you loved. There's a completely different feeling from that than some other asshole in another uniform pointing a gun at you and you pointing a gun at him. That's war. That's completely different when you're doing this to somebody you know. It's completely different when you're at that point where you're going to kill or harm someone that you know. Really bad when you're you're going to kill or harm someone that that you uh, that you <laughs> that you basically love. It's family. But in a without rule of law scenario, a shit has the fan scenario. A lot of people are going to be faced with that. Um, I don't care if you're talking EMP. Uh, uh, swine, few, bubonic plague, uh, teenage mutant ninja turtle virus. Uh, uh, I don't care if you're talking civil unrest, economic collapse, whatever. When people get desperate, a lot of people are going to have to hurt people that are family or that people that were friends at one time. And that is the hardest, most painful thing that you have to do. Doing it up close and personal with a hammer? It, 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 it's just... Cain and Abel. <laughs> you know, I mean... It, I can't even express what it feels like. Because for the longest time I was dead, hollow, and empty. How how do you express the feeling of just being a void uh, of of rationalizing and and avoiding being uh, human or feeling emotion? It's just it's hard to talk about because it's hard to explain. But that's what people are going to be engaged in in a without rule of law scenario. That's what's going to happen when things really really get bad. And you know, that's what really scares me about the whole prepper thing. Because my eyes are open, I see what can happen. Doesn't mean that it will, but I see what can happen. I've been there. I've experienced what can happen. I know what I can do. If I can do it, there's plenty of other guys out there who can do it. And it's a scary thought. It's, it's not a place I want to go back to. It's a place I can go back to, but not a place I want to go back to. And, you know, if you're going to have your little, uh, if you're going to engage in gun battles and all this other stuff uh, in a shit his defense situation, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to say play shoot and scoop, play sniper. Uh, be the concealed marksman. Uh, remove the threats at range. Uh Doing it up close and personal is just, it's not what a lot of people thinks it is. And if you're forced in a situation where you might have to hurt somebody you know, somebody you care about, somebody you love, it's, the guilt and pain you suffer will destroy you. And some people don't make it back from that. I guess I'm lucky, I guess, you know. Some people might say I'm strong because I made it back from that, but I don't feel stronger. I honestly feel weaker because of it. And 